Okay, I'm upwind. I'm upwind, so I'll come down to you. So no prizes for guessing what's in the cooler box. So this fish has many names. Monkfish is the one that I know, but it's also called an anglerfish. And you can see the fishing rod here, which it flicks in front of its face, and there's the lure. So that's where it gets its name from. Most people think of anglerfish as really deep water fish with bioluminescence and things like that. But actually you can find them in fairly shallow water. They're voracious predators and they have backward facing teeth. So what they do is they lock onto their fish and, uh, and the fish can't get away. They've also got a second set of teeth down in the throat there which helps them to pull in, pull in the big fish into their stomach they're bloody tasty and uh, this one could be worth a fair amount but I'm going to take it back and cook it up uh, oh that's not a good start is it <laughs> give it a shake so these monkfish have very slimy, sticky skin. They don't have scales, they just have skin. Okay, they're off. Right, got my scales here, I'm gonna try and weigh this. It's a lot smaller than the other one that I got last year. So what's that, about eight? About 19 and a bit pounds. Not bad, very nice. Now I've got to fillet it up and get it ready for cooking. So the main meat in a monkfish is this tail here. So the tail runs down here, from here, down to there. There's a big bone running down the middle, but there's no fine bones. So all you do is cut the meat off the bone. And the other place where there's meat are in the cheeks here. These are like little steaks and they're delicious. And the other thing that people often use is the liver. And the liver's in here somewhere. This is where a sharp knife would probably come in handy. Let's just get all these guts out. They can have parasites in. That's not a problem. All you've got to do is wash it out. Okay, so it joins the body up here somewhere, so I'm going to cut it off right there. So I put the spear in just ahead of this. Let's see. There 
Okay. Right, so this slimy stuff here, this slimy stuff here all has to come off. And then this is meat here. And it's a delicious tasting meat, and I'll do that later. To get the cheek fillets, lift up the skin. Right underneath the eye, and you can peel away. There you go, peel away the skin. You should be able to feel there's a bone that runs around here. You can go right in there. Okay, and you can start to see the cheek fillet lifting out. There we go. So lovely cheeks. I can take off this grey skin here, and that will <laughs> and that'll be perfect meat and uh, very tasty. So do that for that side and do it for the other side. Here's the meat here, which I'll process up and cook, and that's how you deal with the monkfish. Very tasty, very good eating. If you are lucky enough like me to catch a monkfish, then you're going to notice they're very heavy fish, but you don't get that much meat out of the fish. And this is what you end up with. These are two lovely fillets here, which I've trimmed up and I've taken all the thick, gristly skin off. And two cheek fillets. I'm a pretty decent cook. I, uh, I set fire to my kitchen at university and I normally use the smoke alarm as a timer. So I feel pretty qualified to tell you how to cook fish. So uh, this is what I've got. I've got some leftover new potatoes that have been cooked. So I'm going to cook them up with rosemary and garlic. I'm going to basically roast them. I've got some uh, purple sprouting taste of difference broccoli. And then I've got the fish, the monkfish. So I'm going to season the monkfish and then I'm going to fry it. So I'm going to sear each side and then I'm going to put it into the oven and roast it. And the leftover fish will be a monkfish curry. That's the plan, and I've got lemon as well to, um, to drizzle over the monkfish when it's cooked. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and uh, I'll crack on with it. A good unhealthy amount of salt that's what you need so this is probably a pretty generous portion size definitely more than you get at a restaurant I don't know how much this would cost if you were to buy this from a fishmongers um, but again since I caught it and I had to do all the work myself I don't really care <laughs> Okay, I reckon it's time to flip them. It's a lot more like meat than it is like fish. So you're just basically searing it and sealing it before it goes in the oven. And then I'll give it some time to cook. But you can see it was really big when I put it in and it's got a lot of water that's leaking out now and it's really tightened up as well. It should though have the consistency like lobster when it's cooked. Okay, okay this will now go in the oven. 
this is a terrible oven, and one day I hope to have a proper oven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give generously. And uh, <laughs> and then we'll catch it when it's coming out the oven. Okay. Have a look how this is doing. So I've got the potatoes and the garlic and rosemary there. And these are the monkfish. And they've really shriveled up. And that's because they've lost a lot of water. So I'll give them a couple of minutes to rest and I'll plate up and you can see what it looks like. Now it's, uh, now it's the crunch time, now it's time for the taste test. So the potatoes. Hmm. They're very tasty. And here's the monkfish. Absolutely delicious. Yeah, really good. Um, obviously I'm going to say that, but yeah, that tastes really good. That was definitely worth all the effort swimming around in the sea and uh, and then processing it up. So yeah, absolutely delicious. Yeah. So there's not a huge amount left on that. That was absolutely fantastic. It tasted um, a bit like scallop, so it was a huge, big um, sort of steak, but it was very soft and uh, very tasty. And the garlic and the rose me on the potatoes were very good as well so they all complemented each other bloody delicious